He told us this parable before us as Christians. We are the light of the world. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Hello viewers and welcome to another thrilling episode of The Parables as brought to you from the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, Asian and Television. And today on The Parables, we will be dealing with series number three of the parables that teaches about the Kingdom of Heaven and that is the parable of the mustard seed, which is taken from three books of the Bible. The book of Matthew chapter 13 from verse 31 to 32 Mark chapter 4 from verse 30 to 32, Luke chapter 13 from verse 18 to 19. I am Nzubechi Frank and here with me to discuss this parable is Mrs. Nkiruka Mwofo, a Bible study teacher at All Saints Anglican Church who says on 5 Abuja. You are welcome, ma. Thank you. Please help us read the first passage, Matthew okay. chapter 13. Okay. Matthew 13, verses 31 and 32. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man takes a mustard seed and sows it in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it grows up, it is the biggest of all plants. It becomes a tree so that birds come and make their nests in its branches. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, so I will take Luke chapter 13 from verse 18 to 19. It says, Then Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? How can I illustrate it? It is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make nests in its branches. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, I'm, I'm thinking that for us to, you know, grasp a correct understanding of this parable, we, we need to look at some key elements in this parable. Yeah. You know, the one where we have the sower, the mustard seed, the great tree, the birds. So help us with the representation of this element. Okay, um, I think I'd, it would be appropriate to start with the mustard seed. Sure. And... Um, the mustard seed is a very small, very small seed. Um, of course, it's grown in the Mediterranean, the Himalayas, all of those areas. And um, it's, I believe it's with good reason that Jesus uses it in describing this parable. Because um, it's popularly there. It's regarded, when you want to describe something as small, you would simply say it's as small as a mustard seed. So it's, it's when, when you want to describe something that's small, it's used to say, this is how small it is. We're talking about one to three millimeters. Mm -hmm. So it's a very tiny seed. Yeah, that's what the must, that's referring to size. But then again, from the passage that we read, yeah. you find that the plant is much bigger as compared to the seed. And then I think um, another element that's mentioned there, a tree, a tiny seed grows into a tree. Well, um, looking at that, I think Jesus could have used pretty much any kind of tree, but he chose to talk about uh, the mustard tree. Because when you look at pictures, for instance, of the mustard tree, you see it's not a tree as compared to maybe our Iroko here. It's actually just like a huge plant. Mm. That's about the mustard. And then the birds, again, I think as we study, we will begin to see some of the reasons why Jesus chose to talk about birds nestling in a mustard tree. Yeah. Because traditionally, the way the plant grows, it's not the kind of plant that would ordinarily attract trees to come and nestle, you know. But then I'm sure there's a reason why Jesus mentions that. Yeah, so for a good foundation, yes. you know, let's understand what is a mustard seed? What is its characteristics and function? Okay. Um, the mustard seed, like I said, is a fruit of the mustard plant. Now, 
in current use, you find that it's used to spice things up. For instance, 90% um, of the cuisine in America is um, from the mustard seed. The spice is used, it's also used to make mustard, which you use in a lot of the foods that are produced there. So it's a condiment that has very special characteristics. It's very rich. It has um, anti-inflammatory elements. It's metic, it's got antibacterial, you know, elements as yeah. part of it. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, it's very small, but then it's also very rich. And there's so much you can do with it. Quite so much you can do with it. You know, I was talking about giving us a representation of this element. Okay. And um, I would love to ask this question, you know, what does mustard seed faith mean? Okay. In this okay. context. That's, that's um, an interesting one. Um, looking at the context, because it talks about the kingdom of heaven. Yes. It talks about the yes. seed, the seed of course, as we know, is from a plant, you know, and then it refers very much to its size. Like I said, very tiny, tiny. very tiny, one to two millimeters of, of, of space in diameter. And then it talks about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, if you think about it, is something that has no time no end it's it's unlimited, unlimited it's eternal yeah. and then we're being told that this eternal is now like is something that starts or started from something really small. tiny and then if you look at matthew 17 20 where it says that um you know it talks about faith like a mustard seed if you have faith as small jesus speaking again says faith as small as a mustard seed you can say to that mountain move from here and go to there. So mustard seed faith is talking about more about the quality of your faith. Or if you even ask me, I would say the existence of your faith. Because in Matthew 17, 20, let me, let me see if I can quickly make reference to that at this point. Matthew what? Matthew 17, 20. Uh, let me read for you. Okay, please do. You don't have enough faith. Jesus okay. told them, okay. I tell you the truth, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing would be impossible. Excellent. So you see there, just at the beginning of the verse, you have, it was because you do not have enough faith. Some translations, which I actually prefer, just say it's because of your unbelief. Mm. In other words, it's because you do not have faith that this is happening. But then we know that there are different kinds of faith. faith yeah. Even the Bible talks about faith that is dead, faith that is active. I think what's happening here is that we're, we're looking at faith that is active. Faith that is active. So the mustard seed faith is faith that is active. In other word, words, it goes beyond mental assent mm -hmm. and goes to doing. Because faith, real faith. Active faith is about putting what you believe into action. So the mustard seed faith is talking about faith that is strong, that is active. When that happens, you get the kind of result that is described in Matthew 17, 20. You get the same kind of result that is described in the text that we read earlier, where the kingdom of heaven spreads. Because this faith isn't one mm. that is dormant. It's not one that is dead. It's actually one that is active. So it's active faith, mustard seed we'll faith. We'll talk more on that faith okay. part of this parable. But then I, I want to ask, what does uh, this mean to, you know, when the mustard seed grew into a tree, okay. that birds now came and okay. built their necks in its branches. Now, okay. what does it mean? What does this mean regarding the church? Okay. Um, I think the way we could look at it, if you, if you decide to deal with it, as in theological terms, you'll find that people look at it in different ways. Remember, yeah. it's a parable, yes. so it's not as explicit as That's one it. would yeah. like it to yeah. be. So there are some people who look at it from a negative sense and think that the tree has grown and then it's gotten to this point where people who shouldn't even be around yeah. it are actually coming, coming around in, it. Yeah. And they even think of the people, the birds that come in as false teachers and start talking about, about apostasy. But I think... The school of thought that I, um, I, I, I think is what Jesus was talking about is about how the word of God 
as small as it can come out, mm -hmm. not as it is. What I mean is, uh, let's take for instance, you preach to someone and that person accepts Jesus, believes that yes, he's actually saved and goes on with that conviction to spread that word, which is the reason why all of us are here. We've all at one point or the other heard the word, believed the word and are now professing the faith yeah. that we have. So you see that what happens is the birds, in my opinion, is that Jesus has sown that seed. In fact, he is that seed because it talks about the incorruptible word of God, so describes Jesus as the seed, you know, that yeah. died and then the fruit. And then what he has done is that he has given birth to all of us. And then all of us are part of the kingdom, which transcends time and space. And that's the relationship. So the birds, again, remember it's Jesus talking. Yes. And uh, some people also believe that what he's saying is we're talking about Gentiles here. Ideally, they shouldn't be here. And this is in line with what some theologians say concerning um, the relationship between Israelites and the Gentiles. Of course, we know salvation is of the Jews. Even we say we are now Abraham's children. children yeah. So what happens is the way the plant looks, it's not like your traditional tree with strong branches. branches it grows yeah. to about nine meters or so. So you find that if the Bible is talking about it and Jesus describes it with this kind of extra vagueness where he says it grows and birds from everywhere come in there. Yeah. He's talking about something that's wow. It's, it's almost like it's unusual and really for the plant it's unusual. We shouldn't be able to talk about being children of God, but because of what Jesus has done, we can we make can, that boast. Yeah. So at that time, he was probably referring to the Gentiles and the fact that because of what Jesus had done, what the word had sown has resulted in their access to the kingdom. The church, yeah. So now the, the whole essence of uh, this parable is to teach Christians to put their faith to work. Absolutely. Right? Now, does this teaching still have relevance of effect? Absolutely. In Christian don't today. Absolutely, absolutely it does. And you know, when I was trying to explain faith, I said it goes beyond mental ascent. Yeah. And when faith goes beyond mental ascent, it affects your confession. It affects your lifestyle. That's why people get confused when they meet Christians who speak in tongues, it sounds really great, but the way they live their lives is pretty much the way any other person would live. So mental ascent would say, um, mental ascent would say, oh yeah, the Bible talks about healing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, it says Jesus can heal. Yeah. But then faith would pray and say, I'm healed. And if what you're led to do is go to a hospital, you wouldn't go there in frustration, who knows whether I'm going to get healed or not. Or <laughs> someone asks you how you're doing, so I pray this doesn't kill me. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Faith goes beyond yes, mental it essence. So it is so relevant today, so relevant today that we don't do, oh, you find people, even places where they say they're preaching uh, prosperity, you hear them say, oh, I'm rich, I'm this, I'm that. But then the person steps right out and you say, how are you getting home today? I say, hmm, only God knows all. <laughs> You know, so really, I think I've if there's any time, time. <laughs> well, you need to stop doing it. That's, that's it's, it's, it's what we have to deal with. When, when that happens, you remind yourself about what the word of God says, that this is taken care yeah. of because you're believing that if he says he's going to take care of it, then he's going to take care of it. I'm really enjoying this conversation. But then let's, let's just take a quick break. Okay. We'll be back. So please stay where you are. You are welcome back and thanks for staying tuned. If you're just joining us, not to worry. We have been talking about the parable of the mustard seed. And I've been talking this parable with Mrs. Nkiruka Mofo, a Bible study teacher at the Alton's Anglican Church, who says on Fife Abuja. And so far, she has done a good job with, you know, expounding this parable and exposing this parable to a very good point. And we've talked about how a Christian should use his or her faith to work, okay? And going further now, please, ma'am, I want you to tell us the consequences of a dead faith hmm. and as well, a living faith. Okay. Well, I think um, they're really like black and white. Yes. It's really like black and white. Because if you think about it, 
Again, if you refer to Matthew 17, where it says, if you have faith as small as mustard seed, and you say to this mountain, be removed. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about any kind of situation. As a matter of fact, it's talking about things that sound like they're impossible. Mm. Things that are difficult. Mm. If your faith is active, if it is living, then there's a guarantee. That's what Jesus is saying yeah. here. I'm guaranteeing you, you can count on my word. You can take it to the bank. If your faith is active, you will get results. Now, I don't even want to go into what the dangers are. I'm just going to say, you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. If you have this resource available to you and you choose not to use it, then you're definitely going to lose. And there's no limit to what you're going to lose. Especially when you look at it again from the angle of the kingdom of heaven and the souls you can reach, the people who can make heaven on your account and you don't take advantage of this, then you're probably looking at the place where the Bible says you don't yield fruit and the axe is laid yeah. at the root of the tree, you just cut it off and you throw it away because now it's getting in the way mm. and you don't want to be on that side. You really don't want to be on that side, honestly. Mm. So now the question is, you know, looking at the church, there's Christ church. Do you think the church of Christ is actually growing with regards to faith, building faith? Well... Um, when it comes to things like this, it's difficult to give a sweeping um, position. It is true, however, based on all that we're seeing, all that we're observing. Like someone, I, I think I remember once my son asked me a question and he said to me, Mommy, why is it that these other people, speaking of people of another faith, find it so easy to kill themselves because of their faith? Mm. And then people of our own faith are the ones that are getting killed. He was just speaking as a nine-year-old, yeah. you know, and I, I gave him what answer I called at the time. But then when he left, I started to think. I said, if these people believe so much mm. in what they've been taught and they hold on to their faith to the extent they're willing to die for it, is this something I can do? Because as a teacher, I usually start by asking myself, can I apply this to myself. If I found myself in a position where I had to choose between my faith and some material benefit and all the way even to my life, would I say, you know what, just kill me. Hmm. Just take my life. And if you look at it from that end, then perhaps we won't have a very positive, I won't be able to give you a very positive response concerning the church in Nigeria at this time, and maybe even the church worldwide, where everything is now a shade of this or that, as opposed to yeah. black or white. You've already said, talking about personal experiences, I mean, the one with your son, but mm. then I would love to know if you have any other personal experience or faith exercise that you would want to share with us. Okay. You no, know, okay. probably something that is relevant to the study. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I think what immediately comes to mind, because something that's relevant to the study, referring to how our faith can contribute to expanding the, the kingdom, kingdom of, of God, God yeah. Um, I remember the first time I was supposed to attend a seminar on soul winning. I'm still kind of shy, <laughs> but at that time I said to myself, look, I have to go beyond the opportunities that come along my way and begin to create opportunities to share the gospel. So uh, these people came into the campus I was at at the time, Bill Bright Campus Crusade, Great Commission Movement, they're based at, at JAWS, okay. and they had this series of training where when they're done, they tell you how to lead someone to Christ, the steps to take in discipling the person and all that. I missed a part of the seminar, but a friend of mine attended and she gave me all the materials. And so I sat down and I studied and I was really eager to go out and, and, and put to practice so, yeah. what I had learned. So some young man was the person who was in my way <laughs> and I just, you know, went in. Now the young man at the time was um, not a very good guy on campus, but the spirit led me to, to, him, yeah. to him. And I said, I'd like to share this with you. I think at that time he had some other intentions when he chose to listen. Mm. But God also had his own intentions on <laughs> exactly. him. So by the time we were done, he sobered up, he listened, and then I used that to follow him up. Up until the time I started 
witnessing in that fashion. I had never been on a bus, for mm. instance, to stand and, and preach, preach like yeah. some people do. But I followed him up. He picked up and then I moved on to other people. I made sure he settled in a fellowship on campus that I knew was teaching the word of God. And then a year later, I left school. When I started to hear what he was doing, how he was going on buses, preaching, I thought to myself, wow, even what now happened? I don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that <laughs> if we trust God, when yeah. he says, I love these people, I want you to reach out to them and you go ahead and you do it, the results will astound you. Mm. It will be with the kind of extravagance that Jesus spoke Most about, where he that, said, yeah. all the birds will come and nest in the trees. We just need to be open and respond to God's word, just like he said it. And I believe the results always will amaze us. Of course, you know, I was thinking, you know, your experience has opened my eyes to so many things. Me too, I feel shy talking to people <laughs> about that. But then, having heard what you said, I think I need to work more on that. We all do. <laughs> so, now one of the things we actually do on this program is to tell people the relevance of each parable. Okay. Yeah, to the society, to the individual. You've talked more of the individual and the, okay. and the church. But then, I don't know if you have other things to say. Okay. Maybe lessons we can learn and how okay. we can put them into practice. Okay. Well, I, I want us to appreciate that we are part of something that's bigger than ourselves, mm. that will outlive us. It's a privilege that we have, that we have to make the most of. The devil will be very happy to see us wallow in self-pity, to see us stay stuck at one end and live like people who are less than who we are. When you realize that you have this amount of power available to you to change things, mm. to make a difference in your life, to make a difference in the lives of other people, then you will stop living in a way that your faith is redundant. You will be more responsive to God's word, both as an individual, as a church, as the society to just trust God that he will make a difference, no matter what the situation is. You know, God is described as the one who is more than enough, more than enough. So it means that just by approaching him, it's guaranteed. You're going to get the result and even better than you expected. So it's, it's something we should hold on to and run with. Yeah, we should really hold on to that faith. You know, there was something I, I, I wanted to ask you earlier yeah. about what the Bible said in James, okay. James chapter 2, from verse 14 to 26. Faith, okay. said, faith without work is dead. I don't know if there's anything you have to say about that. I think, I think part of what we've been talking about already deals with it because um, I think there's also another verse that says, the demons, they believe that Jesus is Lord and they even tremble as a result of it. Now, if you claim you have the same kind of faith and it doesn't change anything about you, it doesn't make you careful about the choices that you make, it doesn't um, make you hopeful mm. in difficult situations, then yeah, you've got faith. You wonder you're going to probably make heaven, mm. but it's dead faith. Yeah, It's dead faith. But if you believe and you run with it, sometimes when I read about the things that Paul did, you know, how active he was, I asked myself, am I going to the same heaven <laughs> as yeah. Paul? Is it the same heaven I'm going to? And then when we get there and we have to talk and he's talking about oh, all the things that happened, how he got beat up, how yeah. this happened, what would I have to say? Oh. Well, I know that I don't have to go around looking for somewhere someone who beat me up. <laughs> to prove that I'm a Christian. But I know that all the situations that I find myself in, I need to use them in a way that when it's time to give an account, I can give a good account exactly. of what God has brought my way. And so for me, that's what, you know, active faith is about. Hmm. Thanks for that. Now, I want to say this to us. Let's remember that if you have a faith that is even as small as a mustard seed, Absolutely. you can say to the mountains, move here. Or there and it will move exactly so that's about it on this edition of the program and we want to appreciate you ma for coming thank you i my really pleasure. did enjoy this
Okay. And to our viewers, we hope that you enjoyed every bit of today's edition of the program. And please don't forget to subscribe to our social media handles as displayed on your TV screen. And we invite you to join us same time, same station next week for another interesting edition. Till then, I am Zubechi Franken. Thanks for watching.